I would like to ask Brian Burdekin, Order of Australia recipient, United Nations appointee. I could go on and on, however, on a very tight schedule. And yes, the organisation was named after this man. So what on earth did he do to deserve this honour? Well, he was the Federal Human Rights Commissioner and conducted an inquiry into homeless children and then wrote a little report, just, just a little one, uh, called Our Homeless Children. We then developed our service based on this report. Brian. Thanks very much, Justine, and a very warm welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 30 years ago, uh, homeless young people changed my life. I'd been working as a diplomat and advisor to our political leaders in Canberra, and then the government asked me to take on a job as the first Federal Human Rights Commissioner. And my wife and I live in King's Cross. The locals call it Potts Point, but it's a difference of about 100 metres. Uh, and as I embarked on this inquiry, I found it quite shocking that I was living in the middle of a phenomenon that going into the office every morning and coming home late every night I hadn't seen. I hadn't seen young girls of 12 or 13 on the streets. I hadn't seen young people actually at that stage mistakenly being brought into King's Cross to be placed in refuges, even from Wollongong and Newcastle, into one of the last areas on earth perhaps you'd want to bring uh, young people who were feeling alienated and isolated from their community. But as I went through for the next year and a half, 500 days of looking at the evidence right across this country of what was happening to young people uh, who were, in many cases, not only isolated but feeling quite alienated from our community because of family disintegration or family breakdown for a whole range of reasons, from ranging from domestic violence to alcoholism to physical abuse to sexual abuse. I found the evidence increasingly disturbing and I remember going back to our political leaders, to the Federal Attorney General and the Prime Minister and saying this can't be happening in our country. Because what became clearer and clearer was that most of these young people, uh, it wasn't the case that they'd run away from home. There was a public perception that these were bad kids and if they hadn't run away from home there wouldn't be a problem. As I said at the time, the more you saw the evidence, the more you realised that in many cases home had run away from them. It had simply been a place where they could no longer live in a safe and secure environment. And what came through in the evidence time after time after time, because we looked at every model in every state, in every city, there were different models of caring for these young people. And two things kept coming through with amazing clarity. First was that the most effective model was a model where the local community was engaged and involved in supporting the young people and helping them to maintain their networks. And the second, thing that came through in the evidence was that the most effective programs were smaller programs actually where young people received the care and affection and love and attention that some of us grew up with in families and thought was the norm. The evidence in the National Inquiry was that even in some of the best larger institutions young people often felt they were just another file and in some cases they were not able to maintain the networks or the friendships in the local community or their contacts with their parents and in some cases re-establish contacts that in adolescence uh, could sometimes be re-established. What we found was that community networks were absolutely critical. They were critical for informed support for the young people, they were critical for job opportunities, they were critical to enable young people to stay in touch with their friends and their families, and they were critical to give the young people a sense that the local community really cared about them. I, have, I can't tell you what it was like listening to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young people who said, we're not worth anything. Nobody cares. It was very disturbing. And as a lawyer and many years before that as a diplomat overseas, I couldn't believe that this was happening in our own country. In recent years, I had a chance to have a brief chat to the Premier before, and I went to the website of uh, this great state last night and looked at our infrastructure projects. And there's many we can be very proud of, public-private partnerships. But I believe that our national infrastructure, our state infrastructure, our physical infrastructure is enormously important. But I also believe very strongly that our young people are a critical part of our social infrastructure. And the more we can do to support them and keep them involved and engaged in our community, the more we will avoid, and when I did this report with great respect, Premier, I was conscious of the power of the Treasury having worked in Canberra. And I knew in addition to outlining the human rights violations of these young people. Some were literally dying in the streets. Many were being abused. Many were ending up in King's Cross. I won't go into that. It's a pretty horrible scene. 
But what I can tell you is that we did a cost-benefit analysis. It's one of the hardest things I've ever written. To look at what the costs to our society of not assisting these young people would be. Not getting involved in the sort of early intervention and prevention that is the hallmark of this association. And what we found was that the community costs were huge. The costs in terms of juvenile justice, the cost in terms of young people, in some cases, moving from that into the adult correctional facilities, the cost of health care, the costs to the individual, the costs to the long-term social costs. I could go on. But our political leaders have to weigh these costs with all of the competitions for programs. But what I would emphasise this morning, and I'm enormously grateful to see the Premier and our Attorney General and mayors and councillors, as well as business people here this morning, because that's what we need. We need an understanding that support for these young people where they need it and when they need it is absolutely critical. In conclusion, therefore, when the Manly Warringah Youth Accommodation Service, I think as it was called, came to me about 25 years ago and said, could we rename ourselves the Burdekin Association, I was very embarrassed. And I said, well, that's very nice, thank you very much. I'd prefer you didn't. And then I came and, I came and had a look. And what was absolutely clear to me that everything that we had included in this report, and it wasn't just me writing that report, it was people from the Brotherhood of St Lawrence, it was people who'd worked with homeless people at the sharp end on the streets for many years in many of our big religious organisations, people who knew what it was like at the coalface. And what I came to realise was that this association really epitomises everything that I regard as crucial to addressing this problem in a way that is very realistic, that involves prevention of crises and early intervention wherever possible and family reunification wherever possible. So I want to thank you most sincerely, Premier, Attorney General, Mayors, Councillors, those of you who are supporting this organisation. I believe it's making an enormous contribution to this community. Frankly, it's the sort of thing that this association is doing is being replicated in other associations across the country, and I think that's something that you in this community can be enormously proud of. So thank you very much. As a, as a gesture, um, my wife and I are going to make a commitment this morning, we have already, to contribute $5,000 a year for the next 10 years. Uh, that's very small compared to what I know some of the business associations here have contributed, but we're all in this together. I had a big argument with my staff about what we'd call this, and I said, we're going to call it our homeless children because they're our responsibility. It's our community, they're a part of us, and a critical part of the infrastructure that will build this great nation into something even better than it is now. Thank you very much.